um, the things that were hard, hard to hear. This morning we talk about children. These little guys up here. Jesus wants these disciples, these followers of him, to be thinking or in the right way. And so one of the first challenging aspects that he talks about is children and the approach of disciples to children. What are disciples to think about children? The culture of that day basically taught that children are a nuisance, are inferior, they have no place, they are not to be heard, right? They're just kind of be put up with until they finally grow to adulthood. That's not the valuation of Jesus Christ, nor it is the valuation of the church when it comes to children. It can't be. And he calls us to think discipleship. He calls us to think biblically about children. And so he gives this passage of scripture, lessons from the little ones, Matthew chapter 18, verse 1 through 15. And at the time, the disciples came to Jesus and said, who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And he called the child to himself and set him before them. And he said, surely I say to you, unless you are converted and become like children, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever then humbles himself as this child, he's the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever receives one such child in my name receives me. But whoever causes one of these little ones to believe in me to stumble, it'd be better for him to have a heavy millstone hung around his neck and be drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe to the world because of its stumbling blocks. For it is inevitable that stumbling blocks come, but woe to a man that through, the stumbling, through whom the stumbling block comes. If your hand or your foot, here's that passage, causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it from you. For it's better to you to enter life crippled or lame than to have two hands and two feet and be cast into the eternal fire. Did Jesus believe that there was a real fire, a real hell? Of course he did. If your eye causes you to stumble, pluck it from you and throw it from you. For it is better for you to enter into life with one eye than to have two eyes and to be cast into the fiery hell. See to it that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I say to you that their angels in heaven continually see the face of my Father who is in heaven. For the Son of Man has come to, see, come to save that which was lost. What do you think? If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them goes astray, does he not leave the ninety and nine on the mountains and go and search for the one that is straying? If it turns out that he finds it, truly I say to you, he rejoices over it more than over the ninety nine which have not gone astray. So it is not the will of your Father who is in heaven that one of these little ones perish. So you get the message through this whole thing, right? He is talking about children. He's talking to his disciples and the right heart and the right understanding, and he points to children. And Jesus, in a, in a world that says, you know what, children don't matter, children have got nothing to say, Jesus brings a child and said, you got to learn something, disciples. In fact, you got to change. You got to change. Because what were the disciples concerned with? Who's the greatest? Who's the greatest in the kingdom? Who really gets the position and the place and the honor and the power? Who really gets that? Is that not a concern of adults? Said, Man, you got to change. You got to change. Because when you're absorbed with those things, you know what? Children have no value to you. Because they don't help you get ahead. They burden you. They slow you down. They don't help you advance your cause. They don't help you to get position or power. Or wealth. Now pay attention to this child. Because this child demonstrates the way into God's kingdom. A child will show you how to enter the kingdom. Remember the disciples were asking questions about who is the greatest in the kingdom. Who is the greatest one? And Jesus turns and says, let me tell you what. I want to talk to you first about how you even enter the kingdom. Uh, are we supposed to become innocent like children? I raised four little boys. They are not innocent. <laughs> they may look precious and then, you know, but they're not innocent. I, I, there's some terrible things that go on, right? Biting, scratching, hitting, uh, all kinds of things, right? Things that had to be dressed. Some said, 
Now, if you want to get in the kingdom of God, what you got to do is be obedient like a child. I think the first lear- words my, my kids learned, no. It was not yes, daddy. Yes, daddy. That's not it. I think the clue is giving us what Jesus is talking about here is whoever then humbles himself as this child. What he's looking for is humbleness. Our word for humbleness is uh, kind of pictured in this bag. It comes from the same word as we get humus. My wife said, that's not hummus, Bruce. We eat hummus. We do not eat humus, right? But you see that? The word for humble comes from the same root word. It comes from the same word. You know what it means? Organic decaying matter. That's humility. That says, I got nothing to offer. Aren't you glad I'm wearing gloves today, you know? I want to shake your hand afterwards. Glad you're here. (laughs) But a child, a person who is humble, I'm just dirt. You see, a child is totally dependent upon someone else. A child has to trust someone else. I'm hungry. Can I have some breakfast? I'm ready for breakfast. How do you spell my name? Can you read my book? And they can trust in Jesus. Saying, you know what? Jesus is the one who died for me. They know they're sinners. Have you lied? Have you stolen? Have you said bad words? Yeah. Jesus loves you. And he died on the cross for you to forgive you of your sins and to give you a place with him forever. He says, but anyone who causes one of these ones who believe in me to stumble. The word there is in Greek is scandalizo. If you scandalize a child, it is a serious matter before God. Better for a millstone were hung around his neck. Millstones were used for uh, crushing the grain. This is from Nazareth. And uh, these are all over the all over, uh, Middle, Middle East. Donkey walks around this and the grain, the whole grain is tossed in there. And this millstone goes around and around and around and crushes it to just a fine powder, the grain. Until it can be used for bread or whatever, you know, whatever they want going to make. Pita sandwiches, you know. And so he says, it would be better for a man who offends, who scandalizes a child, how serious a matter this is. That a rope were tied around him and a millstone around his neck thrown into the sea. You can't get more serious. This matters to God. Last year, across the state of Texas, nearly 70,000 cases of abuse and neglect. 78% of them were by their parents. 78%. Over 100 new cases of abuse or neglect in Ellis County every month. Jesus is not smiling at that. It's a serious matter. What's my attitude towards children? What's my attitude when when they talk about Awana ministry or children or the nursery or somewhere saying, you know what, we need people to come in there and to minister to our children. Ugh. Jesus is so closely identified with children. 
that he says, you know what? If you're pushing them away, it's an indication that you are really pushing me away at the same time. And is there anything in my actions towards children that is scandalous? It's scandalous. It's time to change. In a few minutes, uh, we're going to be dismissed out of here. And if you go down this direction towards the children's wing, you're going to run across children coming across your path. And kind of push them aside, right? Or you can stop and say, hey, what's your name? What's your name? Who are you? How's your first week of school? What do you like best to do? You got a favorite game? 